So this is the jackknife couch in our RV. It's very comfortable for two people. And we actually did install some seat belts here so that we could have one of the child seats uh, properly installed and safely locked down during travel. Now we're gonna have to do a little reconfiguration because now we have two kids and two car seats and there's just no way that they're gonna fit on this couch. So this is a new seat we're going to install. It's a 36 inch wide seat out of a 15 passenger Ford Transit van. It's going to be real simple because we have the seat slides for the bottom that we'll be installing and we can just click the seat into place. It'll be perfect for holding two car seats and it's got the built in seat belts which makes it perfect. This is the initial jackknife couch that came with the RV and we did a great job of recovering it and we really love how comfortable it is because we added some extra foam. But it's just not going to work for our family of four anymore. You can see down below it's just simply bolted through the floor which is nice and secure but only allows us to have one rear facing car seat for our child at, at a time. And now that we have two children we're gonna swap this out for a used Ford Transit seat that we got online for a real good price. So these are the bolts. There's four legs on this jackknife couch and it's just simply bolted through the floor. It was really easy to install and it'll be really easy to remove. So let's get to it. So the first thing I have to do is take these old bolts off. I'll, pro I'll have to get underneath with a wrench just to make sure bottom side isn't spinning but as you can see there's enough tension on it going through the floor and the metal here that I can just take these off now these ones actually had the seat belts installed on them and that one has the mat on the bottom side, so it's going to be a little more difficult to get off. And this bolt's really long, so I'll go ahead and use a wrench for it. So here's the underside. The bolts are actually above the generator and you can see where they come through the floor here. Here are the seat bolts that go through the floor. They're above the propane tank. So I'll just pull those out and then the jackknife couch should be free. Now with all the bolts out, jackknife's free to come out. It's a little bit heavy, so I'll be getting a friend to help remove it. So here's one of the seat rails I was able to get with the seat itself. You can see it's got the hooks so it'll snap right into place and if we ever need to remove it we just uh, pull the button on the back and then we're able to remove the seat without problems. It'll be a lot easier because the rail has a bolt pattern in it that we can use to bolt through the floor of the RV. So here's a close-up of the rail for the seat. You can see they have these uh, I think they're locator locator little uh, nipples here for the to put the factory install. I'm just going to cut those off. So here you can see I got a nice clean cut with the hacksaw. So now the bottom of this is, is fairly flush. It's going to sit nicely on the floor of the RV. The old RV hardware bolts actually fit right into the hole. So I should be able to reuse those as well. So here's my new transit seat. I got it sitting on the rails and I'm marking it out to where I'm gonna put the drill holes. First thing I'm gonna do is just square it up. Now I'm gonna use the sidewall just to measure out to the outside rail to see where I'm at. You can see here I'm at 82. It's 82 centimeters from the wall. So I'll just do the same at the back and make sure it's square with the wall. So now I'm just gonna measure the back here and make sure are at the same 82 centimeters from the sidewall to make sure the seat is square. So now I'm just going to take my marker and I'm going to mark the middle where I'll drill my pilot hole. So now I'm going to use a smaller drill bit and just make a pilot hole through the floor. 
I couldn't mark the rear corner bolt location because the access is too tight. So I went ahead and did the first three. And once I got those installed, I went and drilled the final back corner. With the pilot holds drilled, I went ahead and drilled the larger diameter hole for the bolts. Be sure to measure and inspect anything below the floor. If there's pipe, wire, or other appliances, you don't want to hit them with the drill when you drill through the floor. I made sure there was nothing below the floor where I was drilling, but I was still careful not to go too deep with the drill bit. Because the seat tracks are so long, I decided to trim down the one on the aisle side just to prevent people from kicking it when they're walking by. So this is the hardware setup I'm going to use. I have a four and a half to five inch bolt, one nut, a lock washer, two flat washers on the bottom to give me a lot of surface area, and then a circular flat washer and a square washer on top that go through the rails. And that's how I'll be tightening it on the bottom. Just gonna slide the washer in and slide the bolt down. At the front I'll do the same, slide the washer in and get my bolt through. Then I'm gonna do the same with the other rail at the front here. Position it, slide that in. Then I'll go down below, put on the nuts, the flat washers, and the lock nuts. The rails of the transit seats were quite a bit thinner than the old jackknife couch's feet. Reusing the old hardware didn't work in every location. I was able to buy some shorter bolts at the local hardware store. Cutting threaded rod to size will also work. When it was all complete, I was super happy with the installation. There's lots of room for the kids seats, and it doesn't stick out too far into the aisleway. We used storage bins under the seat to hold extra gear, and a fold-out stowable table for eating. The conversion suits our family perfectly, and the kids settled right in. For all the tips and tricks on living a nomadic adventure, check out lifeonroute.com. And don't forget to share, like, and subscribe so you don't miss out on the fun.